Hey guys, and welcome back to the Hobby Dude 007 channel. Well, I want to bring you up to date on the Don Garlitz Drag Pack Dodge Challenger and what I've been able to get done on and off as I've been working on this for the last few months. Just a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, but I want to show you where we are right now, how we got here, and review some of the other stuff. And I got a little bad news about it. So, stick around. As most of you remember, this was supposed to originally be just a shelf model, a uh, little bit of detail on the engine, uh, dress up the interior a little bit, get the decals on it and have a nice representation of Don Garlitz Challenger. However, as usual, I have overcomplicated things. <laughs> and uh, But that's okay, that's okay. Uh, we talked about opening the trunk in the last video and uh, doing a few other things, but I want to share with you uh, where we are now, a little bit of how we got there, and um, you can go back and look at uh, the intro and, and part two as far as where uh, where we got up to then. And um, but let's let's get a, a start here. We'll take a look at. Um, I think we'll start with the tires. By the way, guys, what I was using to get the printed on Goodyear lettering off of those drag slicks was just automotive lacquer thinner on a Q-tip and then just wipe it back down after that. Uh, and it left a great surface for it. But I took those Goodyears, took the lettering off, and we're going to make them Hoosier, as you see, like in this picture uh, from the real car. I just like those Hoosier drag slicks. So instead of using decals, and there's a number of companies that make the Hoosier decals, uh, Slicks makes a great set and of drag slicks for, for Mickey Thompson, Goodyear, all of them. But I have an old stencil that was made by Replicas and Miniatures of Maryland Company for the, if you remember when the Sprint cars were first released, when Monogram released those, uh, these were made for three, actually there's four different sizes on this one stencil. And I was itching to use those. So as you see here, uh, you got different size lettering as well as, well, different spacing. So uh, you can use this for 24th and 25th scale. And uh, a great little stencil, easy to clean up. And all you're doing is putting a dusting on it, just like the real, real race cars do. Now the white lettering that I was gonna use is nothing more than Tamiya XF2 flat white and Tamiya X20A, which is the acrylic thinner. And I mix that 50-50. And in this case, because you're using such a... I probably did this about 10 pounds of pressure on the airbrush. And I mixed uh, 0.25 milliliters, which is that first mark there, of paint and the same 50-50 mix on the thinner and thinned it down and it's such a light dusting on there that's all it took so I didn't waste any paint and as you can see it yielded a really good result and by the way you see the uh, the brand new stickers on the slicks I decided I was going to use those as um, as sticker tires so to speak and these came off of a stock car actually originally um, but I thought it would give a really good look to have a, a sticker tire on there. And here they are, finished up. And I'll hold them up to the camera here at the end and let you get a, a look. But I think these turned out really nicely. And here's a mock-up. I just got them sitting beside the car. And I think that turned out rather nice. And this is after the wheels are mounted on, of course. Okay, next up, the interior. 
Now, what we did with the interior, you remember in the last video, we did the roll cage and the door panels and we did all that kind of stuff. Well, you see here on the package shelf, those three indentations there that were factory more than anything else. Well, I thought we're gonna go for that plain Jane interior look of a race car. So we sanded that with a sanding stick, got it all nice and flat and smooth, and then we filled in the little holes that were left behind with just a little mud. And and by the way, that is uh, 3M, or excuse me, Bondo brand glazing spot putty. And once that dried, we sanded that all smooth. But let's move over to the dash. You remember we had filled in on the dash all of the um, heating and air conditioning vents and all that kind of stuff. Gave it more of a race car-y look. And then we used the carbon fiber faceplate where the radio would go as well as the instrument panel. And we used um, some modern digital type uh, gauging there and took one of the Mopar decals I had in my decal box and just stuck that down there. And then here's a look at the console. And this is a factory drag pack. Uh, isn't that kind of cool? And the shifter is from Replicas and Miniatures Company of Maryland too. And here's a look at the interior with the seat belts. This is from the front. And this is kind of looking down in it. And the seat belts, by the way, are decals. I chose not to do the uh, string them up and do all that other stuff. I thought because the windows will be closed and all that stuff, I think it'll be harder to see. Um, so I decided to go that way. And then a look from the back. But I think the interior overall looked pretty good. There's a few more things in the interior. This, this section, like for the safety net and all that stuff that has to be run too. But uh, the basic part of it is, is done there. And the engine, here's a look at the actual engine that's in uh, the Garlitz drag pack. And the, uh, the hat that's on top of the uh, fuel injection up there, that uh, I've yet to make. Well, I've actually got it cut out. I just hadn't done anything with it yet as far as drill the center. Um, but I think... It, it's, it's kind of bare, but it looks really good. And you remember, this is where we left off on the engine, save the, uh, the coil pack wires, which I've gone ahead and added. And I've got those routed, and, and you'll see that in just a second. And if you remember, we did the, uh, the belts in rubber black, and then we did the, uh, the pulleys. All I did was take some uh, gloss coat or Model Master clear gloss and just drop that over the top of the pulleys and here's another look at it after the um, wiring is put in there and you see the carbon fiber uh, that I put over the the coil packs there now the big issue that I was going to have was the scratch building that you might have remember seeing the uh, let's see what I want to use the intake but the the high-rise part of it and um, my buddy Wayne Stevens also did a drag pack the Ram Chargers drag pack and if you haven't seen that go over to his uh, Facebook page and check it out uh, it is really really cool uh, he and I had talked about this um, I don't think mine's gonna be ready for Atlanta but I'd like to have been able to display them and in the future, hopefully, we can do that. But he had this intake that he got on eBay. And as soon as I saw it, I went, man, that would save me all kinds of scratch building. I said, dude, where did you find that? And he was gracious enough to, to give me the info on eBay where he found it. And I ordered a couple of them myself. Uh, because this is, this is the intake. So um, we got that squared away. And um, you can see here up where I got two. And I had to modify one to fit. Um, the one on the right, you can see, is shortened a little bit in the front and back uh, to fit that Hemi. And after I got it all sanded and all, here you see uh, it test fitted there. It fits great. 
and after that I went ahead and got it primed and then the base coat in the gloss black and after that was dried I stuck it in the dehydrator a few hours and the gloss black I used on that by the way was the Tamiya uh, TS14 um, pretty sure it was TS14 just just regular black and here it is in all clad dual aluminum and you see the barrels up there those are in um, I, I think it's called burnt metal or something like that but it's kind of got a goldish tint to it um, but I thought that turned out really sharp now the fuel rails those I used AK super chrome and brush painted them chrome and then went back after they dried for a couple hours in the dehydrator with all clad transparent blue because if you remember on the, and you can go back to it the drag pack that's in Garlet's car it did have the blue uh, fuel rails and you can see here just a quick look and again this is not going to be a show model anyway this is this is just going to be a fun one and several other looks and here's the test fit in the car now the headers these are uh, 3d prints and what I did with these I shot them with some uh, Tamiya primer went back with exhaust uh, all clad by the way all clad exhaust uh, shot that and then went back with that pale burnt metal in a couple of spots and then I took something that I just picked up that I have not used before and it's called burnt carbon and you'll notice down near the end and up at the top of the pipes uh, the kind of uh, grayish look in the bottle this stuff looks like it's just transparent black or something but uh, I got that stuff put on there and uh, used just the airbrush and the in a double action in the forward position just blowing air and dried it really quick of course all clad dries really fast anyway and it gave it that carbon kind of cake look there and um, based on where this is going to be in the car you're really not going to see the headers but I'll know that they're there but I, I think those turned out pretty darn well pretty well now moving over to the chassis um, we're going we're gonna to look in the trunk here because I am going to be cutting the trunk open and doing all that stuff and again check out Wayne Stevens uh, drag pack <laughs> and you'll see where I'm going with this but you see the fuel cell down sitting down in there you see where it's kind of cut out down there where the spare tire would drop in um, and then here's a look at the finished out with all the lines and wires and all but you see how it sits down in that little well down in there and uh, so we, we had to reproduce that and if you can see the ribbing in the bottom of the uh, well what everything is sitting on the battery and all that stuff is sitting on the little ribbing down in there and basically all that is if we flip the chassis over you see what's underneath there where the spare would be dropped down in there uh, and then the fuel cell back there so what we did was remember we took a piece of like an old thin uh, lasagna pan we cut it out kind of to shape and then we took our q-tip and laid that over the top of it and we just burnished the daylights out of it just press 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 rub 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 till we get all of those shapes into the metal now the next thing and you of course we had to cut it to the shape that's going to drop down in there and when we put it in so we don't crush it or, or lose any of that shape we took five minute epoxy put a layer of it down up underneath that and then laid that on it so that gave it strength in addition to bonding it to the chassis it gave it strength to uh, to hold on to it and as you see above it on the left side you see the frame well the molding stuff well all that had to be closed in so we needed to take some sheet plastic and we did that and you see how we built that up there and you see how we have built the little well around that section right there where that'll be sitting down in it and next 
we needed to put some uh, putty back there, throw some mud on that so we can level and clean everything up and that'll be a nice, nice fit down in the bottom. And of course that fuel cell will be on the left side down in the well and the battery will be on the right side. But you'll still be able to see uh, all of that ribbing and, and all of that stuff down in the bottom. Okay. All right, guys, well, let's take a look at the rest of the car. Okay, guys, in a quick review here, we'll take a look at the finished slicks with the stickers. And by the way, I taped that off and took the word Goodyear and uh, cleaned that off too. I did not sand the seam because they're brand new tires. So I think mounted up these things really did turn out well, though. But there's your uh, Hoosier Racing Slicks. And then there's your front runners. I think those turned out really well, too. Um, and, of course, our drag pack hood is ready for the gloss black paint. And uh, just a mean-looking little thing, isn't it? So looking forward to getting that done. Now, the engine does require some more work, some wiring. Uh, there'll be a fuel between the fuel lines or the... Uh, Fuel logs there. There'll be a, a cable that run the cable fuel line that runs across there, and it's getting late apparently. Uh, and there'll be a few other lines, electronics, and that kind of stuff that need to be run through there as well. But I think this uh, looks pretty good, and some linkages and some uh, return spring, that kind of stuff. Um, but I think she's looking pretty darn good in the interior. Uh, well, in here it's kind of hard to see anything, but um, and of course there's the uh, well. You can see down in there where that's going to go, and then of course up in there, and there's not a lot of light that you can. Well, you can see up in there, and then the roll bars back there will have to come through to the chassis frame as well, but. Uh, get all that smoothed out. Now, the bad news. I have 85 days to Atlanta and I have two theme projects. You know, as you know, the three themes this year is 100 years of Le Mans, 70th anniversary of Corvettes and NASCAR. Well, I've got a NASCAR and um a Corvette that are well, well underway um, that are going to go for the theme, but I did just didn't realize there was that few days left. So I apologize. I, I really want to get this done, but it's going to have to go on a back burner. So I'm going to have to box it back up, set it aside again. If you remember, I ran across this after getting all my stuff compiled together and then running across it and going, oh, i got to finish that. And here I am not getting it finished. But, of course, Squad Room, the business that Amanda and I own, has kept me busy, and I've been uh, at it with her being down uh, by myself this season, uh, a decent amount of it, and, and running, doing things. And uh, she's at home full-time now. So some things are going to change a little bit, and uh, I, I look forward to getting back to this. But I'm eager to get back on the NASCAR and on the Corvette for... Uh, Atlanta, and I am going to be sharing that with you as we go along. So the next two builds, as something's drying on one, I'll probably be working on the other. Uh, if I can squeeze something back in here, I'm definitely, definitely going to try that. And I may, I do have one more project I, I do want to squeeze in somewhere. I don't think I'm going to have time to do it before Atlanta, and I could be totally wrong. Uh, the NASCAR build for Atlanta is a wide open, full detail build. And like I said, a lot of it is already underway. Uh, and the Corvette's probably a third closing in on halfway there. I've just got a lot of body work left to do with it. And uh, the engine's finished. Um, uh, some of the drivetrain is finished. But I, I think I'm going to go a different direction on some of that too. But I look forward to sharing that stuff with you. And don't worry, guys. I really want to get this thing finished. So it is not going to go in, in a box for a year. So we're going to get back to it. Uh, I'm a Mopar man, and I love these Challengers uh, 
a lot. Okay, guys, uh, that's it for this time. Oh, 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 one more thing. If um, let me see if I can find it. This coming weekend, if you are in the um, the southeast and can make the trip, this is the Carolina Custom Modeler Summer Classic, and it is on the twelfth next weekend. Uh, the theme for the show is F-Series Trucks. This is in Clemens, North Carolina at the Village Inn. And um, this is always a first-rate show. And check this out. It is sponsored by Wes's Model Car Corner, our buddy Wes. So uh, if you're interested in more information or helping out at all, call Ryan. You can pause and get the number right there. And or Kenny at this number here. Um, I know they'd be glad to, to take any help that anybody can offer. I'm going to go up a, a day early and see if I can uh, help out with anything. Well, guys, I think that's it. Be sure you go over, if you need any parts, any uh, paint especially, MCW, Tamiya, uh, check out the kits at Hobby Nut Models. Mark's got an absolutely fantastic inventory over there. So head on over and check him out. Link is in the description of this video. Hopefully, if you're in the area, I'll see you next weekend at the CKM Summer Classic. Guys, God bless. I will see you in the next video. Later, guys. Thank you.